Amazon has a service called Amazon Web Services. And as part of that, they have what they call EC2, which is what other people are calling cloud computing. EC2 stands for Elastic Cloud Computing. Um, cloud computing is where you, you can fire up a bunch of servers based on the, the demand that you have, and they're load balanced. So say you have a, a site and it's experiencing the slash dot effect where you're having an, an abnormal number of users or perhaps the Christmas rush effect, um, then you want to be able to spawn up more servers to load balance all that usage. What we're going to use it for is just as a free VPS because for people that have not used um, EC2 before, Amazon will give you a full year to try it out for free. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll start by Googling Amazon free tier. And before we even go there, I actually like to search uh, free tier limits. And I'll open up this. Uh, it's important to know that you will be charged for using it, but as long as you're within the limits, the charge will be rebated back to you. So your bill will be a zero balance, but you'll see that you were charged and rebated. And that covers enough hours to run continuously each month, one micro instance, um, and it includes 15 gigabytes of bandwidth. The important thing to remember is that if you go over this limit, the charges are pretty high. I believe it's um, 10 cents per gigabyte or something like that, um, which is unusually high because this is an on-demand instance that we're running, and the on-demand instances have a higher cost than the reserved instances. So normally when you use this service, you would pay for a year or three years of service um, in advance and then you'd get the rate that would turn out to be something like um, 20 bucks a month um, but again staying within these limits which is perfectly reasonable we can do everything for free so I'm gonna close out of this and we're back here at our search so Amazon free usage tier I'm gonna click on that I'm gonna click sign up now now you sign in with the same information that you use for your Amazon store account. Um, but if you, if you log in and it tells you that you need to verify your address, which is often the case, particularly if you live in an apartment or you have a suite number, it will tell you that it couldn't verify your address. Um, it's really just a one-time error message. You can scroll down, click the agree button again, and then click continue and it will let you through. So don't be intimidated by that if you encounter it. So I'm going to go ahead and then sign in. Um, you also may be asked to agree to some terms and conditions um, or some additional prompt that I haven't had. Um, but once you complete that sign up process, you should be here where you can access my account and console. And you're going to click on AWS Management Console. Now, from this big list of things, what we want is EC2. That's what, what we're going to pretend to make a virtual private server out of. And another key distinction between EC2 and a regular virtual private server from a provider such as Linode or Chunkhost or Thrust VPS is that it's expected that it's okay for an instance to fail. So let's say the hardware that your virtual private server or your EC2 instance is running on suddenly fails, it's expected that through their API your application that would, would then be, be spawning other servers to load balance for that failure. Um, so it is not as reliable as a regular VPS and that's explained in their, um, their FAQ. Anyway, I'll click launch instance and then you'll see something a little bit different for me. You should have this create new already selected. I'm going to name this instance AWS Freebie. 
and then I'm going to call this key pair AWS freebie as well. What the key pair is uh, is the encryption keys. It's the a set of encryption keys that will allow you to log in to the server. Amazon does not support logging in with passwords, so you you must um, have this encryption key file. And we'll go into that a little later. So I'm just going to click download. And then in order to be eligible for the free tier, you have to have not already been using AWS and you need to select one of these with the star by it. I'm going to recommend Ubuntu 12.04 LTS 64-bit. Um, and now I'm don't I don't need to edit any of these details, so I'm just going to go ahead and launch it. Now we'll go over here to instances, and you'll notice I have a couple of deleted instances um, because I was doing a demo before, and they're just left over. They haven't been completely cleared out yet, uh, and this is the instance that is still being created should be done in just a few seconds however when it's finished it still will not have an IP address so we won't have any way to connect to it we have to assign the IP address separately that's down here in elastic IPs we click on allocate new address yes allocate and associate and then we associate it with the instance we just created so now we can go back to instances, it's up and running, and here's the IP address. So I'm going to continue with this tutorial on Mac. Uh, I may later post this next segment for Windows. If you're using Linux, I believe that it's identical, so there shouldn't be any problems there. But I've got a terminal opened in this other window here and I'm going to first move the PEM file from my downloads folder into my .ssh folder um, which is a Linux or Mac user you'll already have and that's just for organizational purposes it's nice to have it in there that's kinda of where it belongs so now I'm going to ssh i to, uh, to um, specify the identity file. I'm going to use the AWS freebie.pim as the identity file. Um, Ubuntu is the username for the server. That's not something that we specify, that's something that Amazon automatically assigns. And then I'm just pasting the IP address from the other page. It's going to come up and it's going to ask me, am I sure that I want to connect to this IP address because I've never connected to it before? And I'm going to say, yes, I do. And now I get a warning about my key file being unprotected. The reason that is is because I downloaded it, and it downloads with default permissions, which aren't um, secure enough. So I'm going to use chmod to set the permissions so that only my user can read the file. Um, so if somebody else logs into the system, they wouldn't be able to ls my user directory and then be able to see this file because these encryption keys are supposed to be kept very private. So now that the permissions are correct, should log in. And here we are. Now I'm just going to log out right now and clear the screen. And I'm going to show you how we can shorten this. So first off, I'm going to copy the IP address again and I'm going to open up Etsy hosts. This is a neat little trick um, that's wonderful for VPSs and also web development. I'm going to give that IP address a nickname that's only valid on my computer. So um, now, if instead of addressing it by the IP address, I do AWS freebie, 
it's going to warn me I've never connected to a computer named AWS Freebie, but I recognize the IP address. Do you want to connect? Yes, I do. And I'm in again. But again, I'm going to exit because I want to show you another thing we can do. Um, so we have this username. By default, it would select the username uh, the, of the current user, which for me is AJ. But we want it to always use Ubuntu, and we want it to always use this identity file. So I just copied that, and now I'm going to uh, I'm going to create a config file in my SSH folder. Oh, and oh, I need to copy the IP address again. I'm just going to go over here and copy it. Oh no, wait! I didn't need to copy the IP address because I'm using the host name freebie so I tell it for this host always use the user Ubuntu and always use the identity file AWS freebie.pem now I should just be able to type SSH AWS freebie and I get in so that makes it much simpler and now, I believe Python is installed. So let's run. Uh, Python comes with a simple HTTP server. And we can run that on port 80. That's why I'm using sudo here. And now, we should be able to connect to it. If we use the host name we put in the uh, Etsy host file, hmm, seems like I can't connect. Looks like there's one other thing I failed to mention. So, as part of that quick launch, there was a security policy created that's a firewall not on the VPS itself, or the EC2 instance, I should say, but that's part of um, the AWS console stuff. So it was this one we created here, Quick Launch, and it has these firewall rules. So I think what we could safely do is allow all TCP and allow all UDP and allow all IMCP. So effectively, this disables the firewall. Okay, now let's go back and try again. And the reason I'm putting the HTTP colon slash slash here is so that Google knows that I'm not using a search term, but that I'm actually trying to resolve this as an address. Boom! Great. So now if we wanted to take this one step further so that other people could easily access our VPS, um, I'd recommend using FreeDNS, but that will be a tutorial for another day. Um, however, let me hit control Z and then BG so that that continues running as a background process. Um, while you weren't looking, I created a readme file. So I just want to create this again. Actually, let's create index.html. HTML and HTML. Let's see doc type HTML head close head body close body give it title and title and the title will be of course 
Hello world. Oops. And a nice p tag. Hello amazing world. And now I think we're lucky if we refresh. We just put up a web server. Awesome. And lastly, I just want to show you back over here in the EC2 management console, back at instances, um, when we want to kill this instance, and hence we'll no longer be paying for it, we go down to terminate. And then be sure to release the elastic IPs when you terminate the instance otherwise you will be charged a dollar per month as long as you have the free tier service running it's free but when you stop that free tier service it then since you no longer have a free tier service you're simply using an IP address just make sure that you also either release the IP address here or if you forget to do that when you terminate it go to the menu here and disassociate the address so that there isn't a charge for it going to waste.